Hello, I'm Philippa, and welcome to our second session on life's big questions. Today's question is, how do I know that time is passing? Can you imagine life without time? <laughs> Almost impossible, isn't it? But how do we sense time? And what with? We hear sounds with our ears, we see with our eyes, we smell with our nose, but we don't have a body part to sense time. We cannot see time, hear time, taste time or touch time, but we can still feel time passing. Our ability to sense time passing and to have a feeling for how long things last are a really important part of how we understand the world. We use clocks to help us measure time passing really accurately. But even without them, we have a sense of how much time has passed. You know that much more time has passed since your fourth birthday than since your breakfast this morning. You also have a sense of now. You can tell the difference between things that happened in the past, things that will happen in the future, and what's happening now. The cycle of light in the day and darkness at night also helps our bodies know that time is passing. If we try to keep time without day and night, weird things can happen to our sense of time. This woman, Stefania Fellini, decided to go and live in a cave. She spent 130 days without seeing day or night. She wanted to see how it would affect her experience of time. She had no clocks, no way of telling the time, whether it was day or night, or even how many days were passing. When she came out, she thought she'd been in the cave for about eight weeks. The other researchers told her it had been more than 18 weeks. Now, we can't all go down and live in a cave for four months, but we can see how good your sense of time is. For this experiment, we're going to play some peaceful music. We want you to close your eyes and listen, and then put your hand up when you think a minute has passed. And then, and only then, can you open your eyes. If you're a teacher or an adult, have a look for when those hands go up. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes. The music starts now. And open your eyes. The music actually lasted for one minute and 15 seconds. Who put their hand up too early? Who was too late? And who was really close to guessing how long a minute is? Well, that shows we might not all know what a minute is, but there's something else. Researchers have found that sometimes Periods of time seem to pass by faster or slower for people, depending on what they're doing. Imagine, two people are watching a football match. The first person loves watching football, 
and their team is scoring goals and winning. For them, the 90 minutes game seems to go really quickly. The other person finds football really boring and repetitive. Mm. The game seems to go on and on for much longer than 90 minutes and they cannot wait to leave. So what's going on here? Let's ask neuroscientist Professor Anil Seth to help us understand this. What do we think is happening in the brain to make periods of time seem to pass at different speeds to different people? Scientists are still working to understand how and why our experience of time can differ from time as marked out by a clock. Some people think that the brain contains some kind of inner clock or pacemaker, which ticks at different rates depending on what's happening in the world. Another theory, which I happen to think is on the right track, is that our understanding of time passing depends on how much change is happening. If lots of things are going on, time seems to be passing more slowly than it really is. Our experience of time also depends on how much attention we pay to things, and it can also vary depending on when we are asked. Our memory